This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Guys, it's 2020 and it's time to organize your life. Start with getting rid of that small suitcase in your back pocket. The Ridge Wallet is different. It's sleek, industrial, and it fits in your front pocket. It's going to change your pocket game. Ridge Wallets hold to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. Choose from over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy, but you don't have to take my word for it because there's over 30,000 five-star reviews. I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I will never go back and neither will you. There's no pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back, get a full refund. If you decide to keep it, there is a lifetime warranty. Click on the link in the description to get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. Go to ridge.com slash chael. That's ridge.com slash chael and use the promo code chael. Paulo Costa came out and he said, I may be the toughest guy on the planet. And the word tough is always hard to break down. Tough mean a you're a, you're a, you're a tough match because you're so good or you're just mentally tough, right? Are you talking are you talking about here? I'm strong here or I'm strong here in the mind. I will tell you, I met Paulo on the set of the Ultimate Fighter 3 Brazil. And the way this works is exactly what you see on TV. I'm coaching, Vandalay's coaching, we're sitting cage side, and don't forget the way it works now where and this had just started, but it was, it was in effect then in 2014, where you had to fight to get into the house. And if you guys will remember that concept, guys were just picked, and they went through their resumes and their records and whatever the process was, but ultimately they were picked, and now you're on the cast of The Ultimate Fighter. We're going to have the tournament move forward from here. And there was a number of seasons where guys never fought. Whether it was an injury, a couple of guys just changed their mind. A couple of guys straight up didn't even, didn't even have the decency to lie and come up with a good, solid excuse. They just went right on the cameras and said, man, I, this isn't for me. I've got to know everybody here and, and thinking about going and fighting with them and compete. I've been training with these guys. I know where my skills are and I'm out. But they had a couple of seasons where you get deep into this production. You've got the toughest tournament in all of sport and all of a sudden somebody doesn't go out there and compete. It was just one of these things. The UFC steps in and goes, you know what? We're going we're gonna to get rid of that on day one. There's go you're going to have a match, and whoever wins the match is going to move into the bracket, move on to be a cast member part of the season. I bring that up because when Paula walks out, Vandalay and I didn't get to go in the back. We didn't get to interface or meet with these guys in any capacity. Now, that was relevant to the integrity of the game. The game. Part being, we both pick a team at the end of the series, see who won more fights than the other one. Okay, that's one aspect of, of, of the process. It's arguably the smallest of the aspects, right? The coaches don't have that much to do with it, but they're along to participate, and it's very relevant because when Paula walks out, I got the same thing in front of me that Vandalay has, which is a stack of papers with resumes. A guy's name, his weight, his height, his age, his hometown, his attributes. And there, there were some very impressive ones. And we had guys on there that were 9-0 and or they were an amateur champion. There's something in Brazil that's, that, that's very good. Jungle fight that Walid Ishmael puts on and really does a good job of identifying and crowning stars from that part of the region that go on. There was a bunch of guys. Jungle fight champions and jungle fight veterans. Really impressive resumes because when we got to Paulo's bodybuilder, that's what it said. Bodybuilder. So he walks into the room and the guy looks like he's carved out of stone. He looks like he looks now, but he has bleach blonde hair. So he goes and has his match. And it, I mean, sure enough, it was like a bodybuilder. It was like a big, strong guy. He was a rough guy. And as the process started, and he was eliminated. One thing about him that I very clearly remember is every single, and he was on Vandalay's team. So our practice times are, are stagnant, but only slightly. Like if Vandalay goes three to five, we come right in at five, go five to seven, something along these lines. So you're always passing, crossing one another. 
You couldn't get Paulo out of the room. If Vandalay's team went first, when it was time for our team to come in, you clean the mats, you do something real fast, everybody comes to their, their practice, you couldn't get him out of the room. He'd either be on a piece of equipment pumping away or running on the treadmill, or he'd have a coach in there holding mitts for him. And this was after he was eliminated. So it was a very real thing where you've only got a couple of choices if you're one of those athletes. Now, you're going to be down in the dumps. It's going to be a weird experience once you're eliminated. You got to go to the house. You got to live with these guys, eat with the. All you want to do is get home and see your family. By the time you get to see your family, you have to then inform them, hey, didn't go our way. I mean, it's, it's just one of these tough things emotionally, or you can use it for what it is, which is the ultimate training camp. Best coaches out there in the finest facilities with essentially endless workout partners that happen to weigh what you weigh and have similar goals to yours. That may sound easy, and you might go, well, that's the one I would be. I would, I would use the opportunity. I, I understand that, but that's a mental drill. It really is. You're in a very tough spot. And that's what Paulo chose to do. He used that as a training camp. He was never down in the dumps once. He knew full well coming into this thing. I have a lot to learn about this sport. I have a different background than some of these guys that have been doing jujitsu or have been boxing or have been wrestling and entering competition since they were nine years old. I did something else. Now I'm going into this. And it was one of those things where we would have to hold up filming because he was in there doing something. He would be in there doing something. I remember when he used to hit mitts and you could hear it behind, you know, when you're in the locker room of the set, you're just behind a very thin door. It's just, it's just a door enough to separate you. And it sounded like shotgun blast going off. I mean, he used to hit those mitts and you could hear it. And you'd want, who is that? Who is on the other side? And after day three and four and week two and three, you knew who it was. It's the same guy that was always in there over his allotted time, working on his skills, trying to get better. And he was a very curious guy. He would come and talk to my coaches. He would come and talk to the guys that were on my team. And he'd be very open and say, Man, I want to do, what, can you show me how to do this? Or I saw you do that. Would, would you mind just spending a minute with me? He was just one of these really curious guys. And when he broke into the UFC, I want to say he was like 10 and 0. 10 and 0 when he got in. And Coach Albarison, who works with him a lot, all he would ever say, he would never say, Man, this guy's the best submission guy out there, or this guy's the best wrestler I've worked with, or this guy. He would say, man, this is the hardest worker in our room. And Coach Albarison has world champions. He's got Henry Cejudo. He's got the Pitbull brother. I mean, he has a lot of stuff to compare this to. Worked with the Noguera brothers. I mean, it, it's like this who's who. And at the time he's saying this about Paulo, Paulo's 10 and 0. People didn't know who Paulo was. He was this good-looking, muscle-bound guy that apparently has never lost a fight. I mean, that was it. That was his resume, right? You don't know anything until you know so. I think he's only like 15 or 16 to know now. He just burst on the scene so hard and so fast. But when I do think of my own memories with a guy that was, was lifting weights and at some point in his life decides, this is what I want to go do, goes and does it, never gets beat at it, by the way, and is now about to fight for a world championship. When you talk about tough, and I put toughness here, this is where I, I, I put strength, not here. And I think you guys would agree with me on that. When he says, I may be the toughest guy on the planet, yeah, yeah, he may be. 